Welcome to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com, dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Serving leaders, managers, and people who will be, helping you reach excellence in your work and achieve your personal goals at the same time. Sign up for the free course at clearandopen.com. Inside any person, there are dozens of unproductive false conditionings that you're looking through the lenses of without even realizing it. And it's my experience, and it's understandable, that when you try to help someone deconstruct their identity to rid themselves of the conditioning that isn't serving them, they fight like hell. Hi, it's Joseph, and thanks for tuning in to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com. In the last two episodes, we discussed how your identity consists of your conditioning, or to what degree, and why the conditioning that most of us received was inadequate and problematic to a large degree. So, why, if that's the case, do we cling so tightly to this conditioning, even institutionalizing it? Because, deep down, we're afraid of losing who we think we are. This is a reasonable response from the ego, but it's holding you back from evolving your consciousness, which is really my goal with Clear and Open. The evolution of consciousness is the lifelong pursuit of deconstructing who you think you are and what you believe so that you can cast away all that's not true. It can be hard, uncomfortable, but it's necessary if you want to break free of the prison you've built around yourself and live the life you dream of. Now, before we wrap this series up, I want to remind you this episode comes from the Clear Thinking course, and if you want to take the extra time at home you have these days as an opportunity to live your life more intentionally and clarify your thoughts, uh, you can find the full 11-week coaching seminar at clearandopen.com. I offer weekly member webcasts, online courses, and mentorship at clearandopen.com because it's my truth that with the right tools, anyone can eliminate the people, money, and time problems holding them back in business and anywhere. And so I share parts of these webcasts and courses on this show because I want to help you too. If you're enjoying the show and learning from it, I'd love your feedback. If you're listening to the show on an Apple device, all you have to do is open the podcast app, view the full description of this episode, and then click the link to leave a rating and review for the show. Thanks so much for listening. Let's start the show. So if you really get how deep the conditioning is in us, that who we are is fine, we just need to add skills, information, etc. If you really see that conditioning and what bullshit it is, then in my picture, you'll be really hungry and you'll want to burn down all of the false aspects of you to find what the truth is, who you really are. And that's consciousness. That's the peeling of the onion. That you are not your religious beliefs, you are not your political beliefs, you are not your opinions about women, men, sex, God, power. All of that has been put into you. And every stone must be turned over and seen from the side to see what is this, this belief I have, this pattern I have, is it actually serving me? Uh, In the last couple of weeks, Bill bravely allowed us to work with uh, an email that he sent that revealed the conditioning that was put into him that success means being a hardworking individual contributor that was put into Bill. It served him as that work ethic will serve many people for a time. But when you're in a leadership position, that conditioning will work directly against you. And that's how conditioning works. If the conditioning doesn't serve us in some way, it won't stick. So another way of talking about conditioning in this way is it's sort of like a strategy. It's a life strategy. Men are this, women are this, hard work means this. And then we do it. And that it works a little bit 
or for a while is actually the problem. Because then you build an identity around it. It's sort of like, you know, there's nothing wrong with a hammer. It's a wonderful tool. But if that hammer is glued to your hand and you think it's you, well, if a situation arises where you need a different tool, you're going to hit the screw with the hammer and it's going to make a mess and you're going to wonder what the problem is. Because you think that hammer is you, right? For example, you're in a leadership position and your people aren't performing, but you're enabling them to not perform by jumping in and doing their work for them when they falter rather than holding them accountable and insisting that you don't do the work, right? But if the only, if the tool you have, the hard work ethic you have is, well, when there's a job to be done, I jump in and do it. Well, then that's what you're going to do. And then you're going to wonder why your people suck. I guess it's hard to find good people. I guess I maybe need different people. You see, you're going to look for outer solutions to that problem because you can't see that you're solving that problem from within conditioning that is part of your very identity. And so this is a really common one. That Bill is talking about. I've definitely got a piece of it. We all have a piece of that because in our educational system, we're trained to be individual contributors, right? There's no point in 10th grade where you'd be like, okay, your role in this class, you're not going to do any of the work. You're just going to project manage these other six people and they're going to write a research paper together, but you don't get to write a single word, right? Wouldn't that be cool? But because we're conditioned, do the work, regurgitate the information, put the test on the fridge. Good job, individual contributor. You're a productive member of society. Yay, good job. Repeat, 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 repeat. Then you end up in a management position and your conditioning tells you, your identity tells you, well, if I'm not an individual contributor, I'm worthless. Where's the thing I get to put on the refrigerator? Right? The number five best selling book, best selling business book of all time, E Myth Revisited from my alma mater, is really only about this one idea the technician, manager, entrepreneur. The technician is the part of us that is conditioned to do it, do it, do it, keep doing it, which is exactly what you need to do when that's your role. But if you're a manager, the paradox is it's your job to not do that. It's your job to get results through other people. It's your job to set conditions so that they want to work as hard as you do while you don't work that hard, not on what they're doing. Now, this sounds very simple to say, but it's in reality, it's incredibly difficult because it's not an exaggeration to say it's a kind of addiction. Again, because at the level of identity from very early on, We learn that who we are is our our value comes from our individual contribution. This is precisely what creates overwhelm in leaders, precisely what makes it hard for them to delegate, hard for them to train their people. Because, you know, when, when the person falters, they have a choice. Well, I can step in and do the work myself. Or have the uncomfortable accountability conversation that nobody trained me to do where I try to get them to be able to do it. Well, which is more comfortable? Which, which doesn't challenge their identity as an individual contributor? Which gets the immediate result? It's obvious, right? But long term, when that person steps in, they've undermined the power of the employee. That employee is no longer developing. That employee feels babysat. That employee is enabled because they've been trained that whenever they screw up, boss will step in and save the day. That employee is not growing, which is actually what they want. And then the manager is overwhelmed because they're doing a job that isn't theirs. And a host of other issues. But you see, it scratches that immediate itch. It serves the technician identity, we could call it. And this is just one aspect of conditioning we're talking about. 
inside any person, there are dozens of unproductive false conditionings that you're looking through the lenses of without even realizing it. And it's my experience, and it's understandable, that when you try to help someone deconstruct their identity to rid themselves of the conditioning that isn't serving them, they fight like hell. Because it's that terrifying. And I can tell you, having gone through the experience myself, I've been deconstructing my, my own conditioning since my early 20s. And there are times of great joy and triumph. And there are times of abject terror. Because here's the thing. When you embark on a additive, constructive intelligence pursuit, gaining skills, gaining information, gaining knowledge, you get to stay the same person, don't you? It might change a little bit, but the conditioned you is improving themselves. It's a self-improvement project. A consciousness pursuit is a self-dissolution project. Because what you don't know when on an authentic consciousness project, you do not know who you're going to become. Because you're going to t- turn over every stone in your identity to see if it's actually real. And some of those stones will end up being real, and some of them will not. You don't get to know in advance. In other words, the process will change you in emergent, unpredictable ways. And that's scary. That's unknown. And this is precisely why people don't do it. But it, and, it and therefore, it's precisely the way we stay small, stay limited, and stay the same. Rather than trying to, um, well, it's like (laughs) putting whipped cream on feces. (laughs) That's the constructive project. And again, like I said before, the problem is it does work to some degree. So we get hooked on it. Well, if I just do a little more, if I just do a little more, if I just do a little more. But then eventually you you run out, right? You just hit a wall and you see nothing else is changing. That's usually where we hit bottom and go, oh, something's got to change here. And that's hit that kind of hitting bottom is usually where people are start to have the willingness to embark on the deconstructive project in earnest. They start to see that they themselves are the problem or who they think they are. Thanks for listening to Manage to Engage, the clear and open podcast. Join us next week when you'll be a little bit closer to who you're destined to be. Until then, know that Clear and Open is dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. If you want to help the show grow, I'd appreciate you leaving a rating and review on iTunes. All you have to do is open the Apple Podcasts app, view the full description of the episode, and click the link to leave a rating and review. Or you can go to clearandopen.com slash review, and it will bring you to the right place. If you're looking for more support on your journey, head over to clearandopen.com for even more tools, articles, and free resources. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now.